Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Sorry it's so loud, but it's good to have everybody here today. Yeah. Um, well, my notes are at home. <laughs> so that's got us. You're going to get. I've got your memory. Yes, yeah, it has got my memory. And I, I've been remembering good. So. <laughs> Amen. I have the mind of Christ, right? Yes. Yeah. But anyway. On Facebook, YouTube, about mm -hmm. doing it like this, and uh, I thought, well, maybe Sheila was hearing from God, so maybe we'll do it again. And uh, so we'll see what I asked her if she would do it with me this Sunday, and she said yes. So we're going to be in James three, and this is all about the tongue maturity. James three. And I'm just going to read uh, read it, and then we'll go back through it and decipher it, and then talk about it. Y'all want to stand for the reading of the word. Let not many of you become teachers, my brethren knowing that as such we will incur a stricter judgment, for we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body as well. Now, if we put the bits into a horse's mouth so that they will obey us, we direct their entire body as well. Look at the ships also, though they are so great and are driven by strong winds are still directed by a very small rudder wherever the inclination of the pilot desires. Mm -hmm. So also the tongue is a small part of the body and yet it boasts of great things. See how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire and the tongue is a fire, the very world of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life. And it is set on fire by hell. For every species of beasts and birds, of reptiles and creatures of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by the human race. But no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil and full of deadly poison. With, with it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be this way. Does a fountain send out from the same opening both fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brother, produce olives, or a vine produce figs? Nor can salt water produce fresh. Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. Okay, you may be seated. Thank you. <laughs> okay, this very first scripture here. It says, let not many of you become teachers, my brethren, knowing that as such we will incur a stricter judgment. Um, teachers of truth are to bring the word of God of truth. There's many teachers today that are false. There's many teachers today that just teach the word of God and preach the word of God, but they don't believe the word of God. They're, those are false teachers. Um, it says, for we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body as well. Now, this word perfect uh, just means mature. That means if you're able to control that tongue of yours, you become mature. Um, and <laughs> well, I think with our tongues, you got to think of the bully. You know, the, the, he will he will intimidate you so that you don't move forward. 
but you also have like Pinocchio, the liar, that keeps lying and the nose keeps growing. You know, it, sometimes it would be really nice if everybody had the Pinocchio nose. Yes, because then we would know. see <laughs> who's, who's really being truthful honest and honest with their words, not flattering us. Yeah, because, you know, motives are very important. You know, why we're doing what we're doing, why we're saying what we're saying. You know, what's your motive behind it? You just saying all those things critical about someone else to build yourself up, that's that's wrong in God's kingdom. Um, verse 3 says, Now if we put the bits into a horse's mouth so that they will obey us, we direct their entire body as well. Well, okay. <laughs> if anybody's rode a horse, you know that that bit, if you pull on the reins to the left, that horse is going to go left. If you pull on the reins to the right, that horse is going to go right. If your tongue and your words out of, out of your mouth, he's saying, will direct your entire life. What that means is, if you're always negative, if you're always complaining, always critical, always, you know, uh, coming in judgment of others, that's going to direct your life. That's going to produce that kind of fruit in your life. But if you're encouraging and blessing and, and speaking good of others, Pick out the good, you know, forget about the bad. I mean, we all have issues, right? Every one of us has issues. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, not none of us are perfect. So instead of picking out the bad in somebody, pick out the good. You know, I was tested on this last week. As I was even going through this, and my study day is Saturday because that's the day I really crunch it, you know. And, and But see, I was unaware that all week God was <laughs> God was testing me. He was putting me through the mill, you know, and I, I failed. I mean, my mouth was like, I just don't understand. <laughs> I don't know about it. And I, I complained. And then on Saturday, it was like I had to repent. Lord, I'm so sorry. You know, forgive me. I, I don't realize that, you know... When we, when we criticize somebody else, when we talk about or gossip or pick on just issues, you know what we're doing? God created that person. God made that person. The creator of the universe, God Almighty, the one that turns this world around, created that very person you're criticizing. We need to watch our tongue because I'm telling you the power that the power of life is in our tongue. It's in our mouth. It's the words we speak. Yes, amen. It's the very words we speak. Life or death. I believe the reason why the United States, now it's mostly the United States, because over in Africa and other places, there's healings and miracles happening all the time. But the United States is where the missionaries need to be. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. we're the ones that brought that lack of faith. Yeah. Because of our mouth. Yeah. We haven't learned to work in unity. We haven't learned to come together as Baptists, Lutherans, Catholics, Methodists, uh, Pentecostal, right. Apostolic. We all need to come together in unity Amen. of the Creator. Amen. Amen. God. Amen. Jesus. But it seems like we can't do that. We've got to be in this little box, that little box, that little box over there. Shame on us. Yeah. It's not going to be like that in heaven. That's right. Well, like the bit in the mouth. God yeah. wants to rein us in. Amen. So that we can serve others. Because and our whole bodies are going to be about serving because we have the word. Of Amen. There's only one church, and those others are just names. Yes. Don't think we're on Lutheran, Pentecostal, Free Will Baptist, First Separate Baptist, those are just names. They don't mean nothing. They just give them names so you can say, well, I go here, I go there. But you better go to God's church. You better belong to that church. Amen. Amen. Uh, it says, look at the ships. Also, they are so great and are driven by strong winds. It's still directed by a very small rudder. You know what that's saying? That great big ship that's in spiritual terms is your life, your world, 
good or bad, is directed by a little rudder. Yeah, that yeah. tongue's a little rudder. Yeah. Picture a little rudder is like this. If it turns left, it goes that way. If it turns this way, it goes that way. That tongue. I'm just using it as an example. But how's it wagging? Is it wagging God's way? Or is it wagging the enemy's way? That was good. Okay. So also, the tongue is a small part of the body. I think I just covered that. See how great a cord is set aflame by such a small fire? We all know the California fires, right? The, yeah. the, every year they have wildfires, don't they? Starts out as a little itty bitty speck. And then before you know it, the whole forest is ablaze. Same thing in churches today. It starts out as a little bitty gossip. And then before you know it, it goes down the line, everything grows, and the church splits. Why do we do that to ourselves? Why don't we grow up? Yeah. Why don't Amen. we become mature Amen. Christians yeah. instead of baby Christians? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We need to grow up. Amen. And the tongue is a fire, a very world of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life and is set on fire by hell. For every species of beasts and birds of reptiles and creatures of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by human race. Everybody's seen on, uh, you know, they tame lions jump through the hoops. They tame, they tame tigers. They tame whales. Dolphins. Every beast on this land can be tamed. But our tongue. Yeah. I think that's why the Lord gives us tongues when he fills us with the Holy Ghost. Because it's at that point that we give him control of the most unruly member of our body. And because we give him control, he then begins to permeate us and change us because we've given him the total authority and control total surrender. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah. Over that part of the body that's so unruly. <laughs> that's her time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. a good word. That's a good word. Amen. Now that is total surrender. I remember when I was praying for the gift of tongues. It, I was like, oh, it's holding on for dear life. I go up because I wanted it, you know. So bad. I wanted it. Yes. I go up to the altar every Sunday and pray for it. Never get it. And I got it at home, listening to the radio, singing and singing. And then I forgot the words, and then I started humming. Before you know it, I was like speaking in tongues. I didn't even realize I was until. I heard myself, and it was just a beautiful gift. It's when you just totally let go. You don't care who's around. Um, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless, evil, and full of deadly poison. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't mature enough to where we can bridle our tongue. That just means that, you know, we're all going to fall sometimes. Not, none of us is perfect. But when you when we mature, we come to the place when we start to say something, we'll catch ourselves. And that's when you know that you're growing in the Lord. You just you know, say something good instead of something bad. <laughs> build, up build, up, build up instead of tearing down, you know. We've got to build each other up. The tongue is where it's going to happen. The tongue is what's going to bring a healing. The tongue and the words that you speak is, is going to bring life to your life or death to your life. You know, And it, it's hard when you're in a situation where you've got a lot of bad stuff going on and a lot of negative people and you have to be around them every day. You know how hard that is? That is hard. That is hard. But you have got to follow through with God and let him surrender to him. And he will give you the strength to get through that. And your mouth and your words that you speak are very vitally important 
when you're in a big decision or you're, or you're going through a, a big physical thing in your life or uh, the power of the tongue can break a, break a marriage or build a marriage up. That's right. You know, I could still hear words that were spoken to me, calling me a bee and, and, and everything else and seeing the face of the person that called me that. You know, I can just picture out there, not any of you or whatever, but I can picture a man out there or a woman going to church, praising the Lord, uh, going home, yelling, critical, griping about everything, going to work, happy-go-lucky, you know, maybe listening to a dirty uh, joke or whatever like that. Coming back to church, praise the Lord. That's not what God has called us for. That's right. That's not how we are supposed to be living. That is a false lie. You are not totally surrendered to God. You are not sold out to God if you're living your life like that. That's right. Shame on you. Yes, amen. <laughs> She's like, you're doing good. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just here to fan your flame, girlfriend. Hang on. <laughs> Um, bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men. Boy, doesn't that say it so true? God's saying, you bless me one minute, and then you curse what I created the next. When we criticize people or gossip about them. Yes, Lord. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've been there. I've done that. I'm not going to tell you I haven't. Yeah, and, and I'm not proud of it. And I want to grow and mature to where I don't do that. Amen. Do you? I know I do. I mean, I know one day I'm going to stand before him. And, you know, I, I'm very compassionate and tender when it comes to animals. You know, very forgiving and loving. But it comes to people, it's a different story. <laughs> I mean, it's like, don't tell me your problem. Go away. <laughs> And I'm the pastor. <laughs> so, you know, I, um, but I encourage them to build them up. And I, I help people all the time. I don't want you to think I, but, you know, when you hear the bad all the time, it wears on you. And you pray, and you pray. Really want the best for them. They do so much. They have to do it for themselves. You know, they have to do the work. It's like, it's like an alcoholic. You have to do the work for yourself. From the same mouth come both blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things as a fountain send out. From the same opening, both fresh and bitter water? Well, is that possible? Can you get sweet water out of one creek in the next minute? Maybe an hour later, get bitter water? It's not possible. Because of the source. Because of the source. There you go. The heart of the Father. The heart of the Father. Now, the heart of the Father is the source. He, he, he looks on our heart. He looks on our heart. You know, what comes out of the mouth is how you really feel inside. That's what got me. You know, when I used to, years and years ago when I drank a lot, I was, I was very wounded, soul wounded, I should say, when I was growing up in my home and then uh, my marriage. And, you know, a lot of people lying to me and, and stuff to me. I was very soul wounded. So when I drank a lot, a lot of things came out of my mouth. And a lot of things were very hurtful. And it's like when hurting people hurt people, that is so true. When you've been hurt, you want to hurt yeah. because you want somebody else to feel the pain that you feel inside. And it's, it's wrong, but that's just how it was with me. And it took a long time for me to realize that, you know, I had to work toward getting that pain released. That was all me. I had to do the work. I had to forgive people. I had to go through things 
steps in my life to do those steps to become a better person. And it's, it's, uh, it, you're either really sold out to God or you're not sold out to God. And if you want to seek the Lord and become closer to Him, you'll do the work. You'll bridle that time as best you can. Can a fig tree, my brethren, produce olives, or a vine produce figs? Nor can salt water produce fresh. You know, I, I was listening to uh, a, a pastor that said um, he has, a, I guess, a fig tree in his yard, and then he's got an olive tree in the front yard because he lives in California. And... Uh, if he walked out there and expecting to pick a fig and picked an olive in it, wouldn't you? For us to grow, uh, to be in a body, to grow spiritually with him and turn out to be a dud. It's all up to us. I don't want to be a dud. I think about milk. I'm thinking about milk duds right now. <laughs> They're kind of good, but <laughs> I don't want to be a dud. I want to be a very fruitful tree. I want to be the tree of life. I want to be the tree that God created. I want. I want to speak bold and good things out of Him. These pollinated trees. So we can produce fruit. No yeah. oh, bees. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, for you on Facebook that don't know what just happened, um, during worship I kept seeing the bumblebee. And uh, I asked my friend Sheila to look up to see what a bumblebee meant in the Bible, and she read it. And then over here when I said tree, um, she spoke that uh, tr uh, bees pollinate trees. So we're, we're the tree of life. God yes. created us to be the tree of life. That's just amazing. Go God. Hallelujah. Go God. Go God. Um, who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior, his deeds, in the gentleness of wisdom. Yeah. Who among what's wise? What's being wise? You don't want to keep your mouth shut. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. If you're wise and you have good understanding, you're mature. You don't judge a person. There's, there's people with different religions, different cultures, different beliefs. We don't judge them. We leave that up to God. Because um, God's the judge. Amen? Amen. Yeah. What are you having? I'll get a little bit. Let me borrow your mic for a minute. Oh, is that thing it, not working? It's not working. So let me borrow your mic for a minute. I said, I'm a power word person. I see things positive and negative. And it's just like this passage that we've been reading. It's what's poison. And the poison is the bitter, the uh, jealousy, the selfishness, the ambition, the disorder, the evil. But to get to the power and the reading all that out so that we will have a pure heart, that we'll be peaceable, that we'll be gentle, that we'll be real. That we will be a blessing. That we will be fresh. Because I want to be that fresh fruit. I don't want to be the moldy fruit that nobody wants to eat. And a bruised. But that's how we be good producers of good fruit. So we want to be wise. We want to have understanding. We want to be of good behavior. We want to be of gentleness. Because when you really are Christ-like, you are following Christ and others will see him. He's so big, he ought to stick out of us. Amen. There should be enough Amen. evidence to, uh, yep. to convict yep. us of being a Christian. We yep. shouldn't have to say a word. Amen. Our Amen. fruit should be able to produce that we are a Christian. Yep. They'll see the smile on our face. They'll see the joy in our heart. And they want what we want or what we have. They want what we have. But when we're not walking in that, People don't want to frown faces and people that are down and that are critical and judgmental. Why? You see how just those very words change yeah. the way you feel. Yeah. God is good. Amen. 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 He wants us to treat. He wants us to treat his children good. Mm -hmm. they, they may not be there yet. 
we got to give them grace. Yes. we got to give them mercy. Yes. You know, they, they may not be mature. We, it's not up to us to tell them how to get mature. Yeah. Let the Holy Spirit awesome. do his job. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, he's the one that changes us. He's the one that works with us. You know, if you're convicted over something you're saying about somebody, maybe that's God saying, hey, buddy, you need to be sold out to me. It's time to tame that tongue. Anybody have any thing you want to say? If we could, if we could realize how um, how much power our tongue has, you know, the scripture says that with the tongue you can speak life or death. Well, that's all we ever speak. Life or death. There is only two words that ever come out of the mouth of a person. Either you speak life or you speak death. And if we could remember that, even to our own selves when we're talking. If I'm, if I'm complaining about how much I hurt yes. out loud, okay, then we are we're speaking death over our bodies. Yes. Yeah. If yes. we if we talk about how um, how much grace God has given to us, we're speaking life to our bodies. Yes. And to those around us. We have to remember that there is not one word, not one single word. If I say ouch, I'm speaking death. If I say glory, I'm glory, speaking glory. life. Yes. And if we could just realize that one single word can change the course of our whole day, it can change the course of someone else's day. Oh, if, and, and I'm as guilty as, as all of you are about doing the very thing that I'm talking about. I have days when I feel like all I do is speak death. You know, I get mad at my husband and I complain or whatever. And, or, you know, something he says sets me off. It isn't anything that Ron, it isn't anything that Ron has said. It's my attitude and the way it comes Amen. out of my mouth. Amen. And so, oh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> baby. Oh, baby. He's crying. He's crying. You're his family. <laughs> but I just. Oh. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I use his and him as, as an example because I live with him every day and he knows my uglies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Far more than anybody else does. He knows mine too. Yeah. Yeah. And so if I could just encourage you to just. Don't speak until you know what's going to come out of your mouth. Yeah. Because our words are like feathers. Once they're out, they're gone forever. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, some, you know, if they're, if they're words of death, how somebody people. is going to be impacted by the words that you've just spoken. Yeah. And you especially, because they came out of your mouth. And we will account for every word we have said. That's what the word of God says. We will account for every idle word that comes out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just encourage you, think about it before you speak. Mm -hmm. And I say that very loudly in my own ear. Yeah. Because I surely have spoken things. Me too. And yeah. um, I'm sorry that I said them now. Yeah. So yeah. I, can, I, I mean, I can apologize. But it will never come back. Those people will always remember what I said. Yeah. And so I encourage you. The best way I've found to have today is before my feet hits the board, I pray for what you're about to be. Amen. Lord, let me have a good day and let me have a good day with everybody else. Yeah. So if you do that, usually your day will go pretty good. Yeah. It's the heart of the matter. It's a matter of the heart. Yeah. Because what's inside your heart is what comes spilling out of that tongue. So we've got to make sure we have love in there and that we are talking grace and mercy. 
So um, I thought that Matthew 28, 19 and 20 was good in the fact that he was talking about teaching. God isn't telling us not to teach, but he's warning us that if you are going to teach, you better make sure you're teaching truth. Yeah. Because he made all of us to be teachers, to be disciples, so that we can bring others into the Great Commission. That's what we've all been sent out to do. To make disciples of all nations. It's not just America. It's all nations. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say this greatest revival is yet to come. Will come from all nations. So for all the missionaries that we sent out. We haven't even began to see the harvest as it comes back. Amen. Because like she said America needs revival more than anybody. Because we got relaxed and we thought we did this. We forgot who did this. God Almighty. And God is about to show up in a mighty, mighty way. Yeah. So a loving heart is the truest wisdom. That's Charles Dickinson. And I thought, isn't that amazing? I just thought that was powerful. The loving heart mm -hmm. is the truest wisdom. Because when we can love, then, then it, love covers a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. And it, it tames our tongue. And when we don't know what else to say, say God's word. Because if we're in God's word, we're in his will, we're walking in his way. We can't go wrong. I want to read this over you. It says, um, I'm breathing heavily. This was uh, Lena Bosser. Bosser. And I thought this was such a good word. And so many of the songs that we sang today was about God's breath. His word. His word. It, it is the spirit of God that's go, that's falling on this earth right now. Now listen to how these words make you feel. And realize it's in the speaking and it's in the hearing. And it's our faith and it's believing and acting them out. He continues to speak. I am breathing heavily upon your heart to bring refreshment and awakening. I'm breathing heavily upon your home. To bring life and a fresh move of my spirit. My breath is bringing life. My breath is bringing refreshment. My breath is bringing resurrection and restitution to the dry and dead places. My breath is bringing awakening. My breath is bringing vigor and blowing away weariness. My breath is ushering in joy. My breath is bringing deep peace and stillness my breath is blowing out all that does not belong and remain and remaining it cleaning what's remaining is being cleaned to bring you into a clearer thinking my breath and blowing away all the pressures and the heavy weights and burdens rise your sails and surrender and catch the wind that will carry you in a new fresh invigorating direction my breath is bringing and revealing clarity, wisdom, and strength. My breath is breaking and striving. My breath brings increase. My breath is bringing health. My breath is bringing strength. My breath is bringing strength. My breath is, is ushering in the angelic host into your home. My breath is releasing rhythm of grace and ease into the home. There was a little Sheilaism in there, sorry, but I didn't I didn't write it for word for word. But I, I encourage you to read that word because I've seen the vision of you holding your hand up, um, while you're writing with Jesus in the vision yeah. that you shared last week. And they were seeds being dropped into the households. And you can see how we're just sowing that seed of the breath of the Holy Spirit as it's falling. And then in the scripture of James 3, and it's talking about the sail and the rudder. It takes the wind of the Spirit to move that ship. Amen. And it is that rudder that controls. But that's why God keeps trying to rein us in. So we, he can use us so we can serve others. So you can see how it just kept coming. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's the power of the three. And a three chord, and like in, in, it, it can't be easily broken. And that comes right out of Ecclesiastics 4.12. So we've got to put God first 
When we don't know what else to say, say God's word. Yes, amen. And that's the only thing that gives the blessing and really is that refining fire because we know that all his scripture is used for instruction. It's used for correction and it's used to edify one another. So we keep going back to the word and, uh, and it is taming our tongue. Yes. yes. And it's like a double-edged sword. Yeah. We're getting prepared for our battle. Iron sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. Hallelujah. You know, uh, I know this is different. Us doing certain. You know, God's all about relationship. Us. And up. Inside. Instead of me, which is the way it's always been done in church, um, I feel family. I yeah. feel like God's calling more for the family table. And, you know, in the beginning when I first started out, we had tables when we first started out, and, and people laid their Bible out on them. And that was my vision that I had, was coming back to God's table, coming back to the Word of God, and his table and then you know uh even moving out here i you know the tables are great because that was my very first vision and and it's about sitting down at the table and talking about your day talking about what's going on talking about what you need prayer for what are you going through you know how can i help you how can i give you encouragement how can i help give you strength you know what this is what God's word is. Build one another up in the faith. Mm -hmm. Let's grow together. Let's mature together. Yes. Let's let's hold on. You know, keep going. Uh, when we're sitting around the table, we're a little more comfortable. When somebody when somebody's standing up in front, it's easy for us to lose our focus. But the, the table is more intimate. Yes. Yes. I can look right at you, and I can see your face, and I can, um, I can feel a little bit of what you're feeling because I'm closer to you because I'm, I'm more toned in to what it is you're feeling and what your needs are. Yes. The table is a place of gathering, fellowship, yes, fellowship. And gathering, yes. and closeness. You know, when we come around the table at Grandma's house, <laughs> we feel safe. Yes. Uh, we are home. Yes. And home. that's yes. what church should be. Yes. We should come in and be safe and be at home. Yes. We're with our families. Yes. I don't care if the stranger walks in off the street. When they come in, they should be able to feel that warmth. Yes. The warmth Welcoming. and the, the acceptance yes. and the fellowship. Mm -hmm. And I hope everybody feels that here. Yeah. Um, I feel a little bit different sitting in a chair. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody looks at a minister as being more spiritual. I'm not more spiritual than anybody else. And I, I, I think most ministers would say that too. They're not. But, but there's something about putting them behind the pulpit. It, it just makes people think that or... And then sometimes we just feel like I shouldn't be behind here. I'm not any more, I'm not no better than anybody else. And I know most ministers would say that too. They're just the same as you and I. But when we sit down and we talk to one another and we tell each other uh, what's happening in our life, we can grow from what you give me in your experience of what you went through in your life and what I can give you in my experience of what I went through in my life. And you bring God's word in the middle of it. Well, you you just are growing right there because you take that home with you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you take it back with you. You just don't fall asleep in a sermon. Yeah. A when you're actually yeah. talking to one another, it keeps you awake. It keeps you alert. Yes. Because mm -hmm. you don't know when you're going to be called on. Amen. <laughs> you don't know when you're going to be called on. Right. Uh, yeah. In the last supper, yes. Jesus said it. Yes. At the table. He sat at the table. That's yes. a good that's a good thing. Jesus sat with his disciples, his disciples at the table. So the table is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No, it's all right. I can call a lot of them. Okay. Uh, 
I want to say one more thing about that and steer the ship, you know. Oh yeah. If if that ship don't have that to steer, it crashes. And crashes it's in it the rocks. Crashes because yeah. it has nothing to guide it. No storm. If Jesus yeah. ain't follow guiding our ship, yeah, then we'll crash yeah. in the storm. Yeah. That's a good example. We'll also sink beneath the waves of sin if Jesus ain't steering our ship. Okay. Amen. Yep. Just Brother Richard said that without the rudder steer it, it will crash into the rocks. Just like our lives. If we don't have Jesus to guide our tongue, we can crash and sink in sin. Because criticizing and gossiping is sin. And, you know, I, I don't want to I don't want that to fall in my life to where I crash and burn. I think sitting in that position that you are in, it's humbling. It's showing your vulnerability that I will come to you as an equal, just like that's what Jesus did. And that's why Jesus washed the feet. And he says, I'm not above you. I'm one of you. And I, I've set this example so you can follow me. And that's the gospel, you know? And that's why this feels different. But you're going to have somebody yelling at you. This isn't fire and brimstone. No. It's, it's, it's more inviting. It's more open. It's more conversation. It's more, we want you to be a part of it. And I, I think... Yes, people will be more receptive. I think this is where our church is going. It's going to look different. It's going to feel different. Because then people can come and they can sit at the table and say, shoot, they, they're no different than I am. They're just trying to walk it out and learn. And they're trying to grow. And, and we're all equal. And now I don't have to worry about what I wear, what I say, what I do, where I go. That, that God's taking care of me. Because I'm taming my own tongue. I don't need somebody else to make sure that my rudder is going in the right direction and I don't run into those rocks. But then Christ that lives within you, he's going to do the work. He's the finisher. He's the one that's going to see it to completion. I want to have that finishing anointing. I want to be anointed to be the finisher, to keep, um, keep uh, my eyes on the prize, to know that that goal of what God called us to do, that he sees it to completion. Mm -hmm. You know, I, that's why we're all busy bees. We're busy about his work. Mm -hmm. We're just doing what we call the sting. But there's no victory in death because of Jesus Christ's resurrection, and we have life, life eternal. That's what we've got to keep remembering, that even though we're facing cancer and we're losing loved ones to this world, we're not losing their souls. We're Amen. not leaving the spirit because the spirit that lives within us. Amen. That's why we tell everybody, RSVP, we're going to have the biggest party on the other side. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> That's why salvation is so important. It's the best gift you can give loved ones is to know that I'm going to see you again. And then, then when the suddenlies come and we lose somebody, we know where they spend eternity. Amen. That's Amen. the greatest gift. So don't waste your words on idle words. Use your words to take people with you to eternity. Mm -hmm. Will you be the mountain? They're going to have to climb up and over you to get there. But I tell you, I want to be that mountain. I never told you. No mm -hmm. one ever gave me that word. I don't mm -hmm. care if they come to the gun shop. I want them to know the message of salvation. Amen. Opportunity when it comes knocking. Because your soul, your spirit, mm -hmm. is so much more important than selling you a gun. Mm -hmm. I want to sell you a turnip. I don't have the answer, but I know who does. Amen. G-O-D. Amen. God is your creator. He gave you a purpose by design. I want to see you walking in that. I want to see you living to your potential. That's what the word's about. Mm -hmm. We're all learning. Mm -hmm. 
Let's mature together. Amen. And it's just amazing how the Holy Spirit works back and forth. But he brought to my mind as she was saying um, to give the word that a, a person that the Lord had nudged me to go and talk to this person like a couple days. And I kept thinking, to witness to this person, I kept thinking, ah, because it was a guy. And I'm thinking, I don't know, Lord, you know. But he was a friend. But you know how you, you think that it's you? Yeah. That you're you're the one thinking about it? <clears throat> well, what happened was the Lord told me to go witness to him. And I'm like, ah, that's just me. You know, it's not really God. Well, what happened was, on the third day, he committed suicide. Oh. So I had to live with that, because God had told me to go witness to that person. And when God nudges you, you gotta go. Don't think it's you. Yeah. Please don't think it's you. Yeah. It's God. Yeah. When Same. God's saying, go say something to that person about Jesus. Go say something to that person about. It, it's God. Yeah, I can guarantee it. It's, it's God. Yes. Just go do it. It's always on my mind is that I should have said something. You know, but we all learn and grow in that way. Now when I hear that, I don't even sure. question it. Yes. If it's about witnessing anything to do with God, yeah. I don't even question. I just do it. And usually I try to do it right away. Yes. I'd like to close with a a song, and I don't know if anybody knows this. But step by step, do you know that part? Just so sweet to walk with Jesus step by step and day by day. Mm -hmm. Anybody know it? No, but if you sing it, I'll sing it. <laughs> you start reading the words. We'll I don't know it. it. That's why I was asking. Oh, then you I just know. read it. So I'm just going to sing a little. Yeah. It is so sweet to walk with Jesus step by step. Stepping in his way. Step by step. Step by step. I would walk with Jesus. Yeah, I'm just saying it. <laughs> yeah, walk it out, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. That's how, you know, walk with Jesus all the way, step by step. Mm -hmm. If you make a mistake, repent. Start over. Thank you. You want to close this in prayer, Ms. Sheila? Dear Lord Father, we just ask you to breathe on us. We ask you to tame our tongue with yes. your words, Lord. We ask you to sell our ship and put the wind in our yes. wings from the altar, Lord. Just yes, we Lord, ask that you take the drive. We ask that you protect our family, you guide and direct each step mm -hmm. as we go this week. That we will always praise you and speak of your glory, Lord. Don't let us let us always count our blessings, not our curses and our woes, yes. Lord. Let us remember not to speak evil of others, for they are made in your image. So, Lord, there was a powerful message delivered here today. Many mm -hmm. seeds were sowed. We ask that they take root in the heart and that your word has reinforced everything mm -hmm. that we say. And anything that is not of mm -hmm. you, Lord, we ask that you uproot it and remove it. Because we only mm -hmm. want what is true to be Because we know that's the only thing that stands and testifies. So we give God all glory and all praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Be blessed, everybody. We love you. I got one thing. Oh, oh, good. I've been reading uh, Jonah. 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 Come on. Uh, and uh, talked about the storm that the Jonah was in and, and how the sailors were want to throw Jonah over, Lord? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The storm is so fierce. Let's get rid of Jonah. <laughs> yeah, Jonah. Well, I'm the cause. Yes. I am the cause. I'm the 
and run away from God. And, uh, and then you think about John and the shipwreck that he was on. You know, yeah. And uh, they were trying to figure out who was causing this. Uh, who was causing this storm to come upon us, you know. And, uh, just uh, you think about that, and are we causing this storm? So Steve was questioning, he says, are we, the church, the ones causing this storm? Yeah. That we took our eyes off of Jesus and we've been running away from God and what he called us. Yeah. And there's a big shaking coming to the church yeah. because we forgot who our Savior was. And he's been in the boat all along. Yeah. Yeah. But we were sleeping. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. just like the storm on uh, uh, Jesus. On the Sea of Galilee, so he he put us he put us with Jonah, you put us with Paul in the shipwreck, and now we've got Jesus and the power of three, because God says He'll see us through the storm. Amen. And then you got to go back to my anchor holds in spite of the storm. And if it wasn't for the lighthouse, where would this ship be? We are called to be His light. Yeah. I'm telling that is a powerful word. Thanks. Thank you for sharing, Steve, because yes. that that was that was explanation mark, and that was from our heavenly right. Father. Right. That, that was our heavenly Father. And what changes our attitudes when we get to the bottom of the stomach? Yes, the and we get skewed out. Yes, <laughs> this is we don't like it in here. It's dark. We're in the pits. Yeah, change my attitude, Lord. It stinks in here. It stinks. But he says, he, you know, lukewarm Christians, he's going to spew us out. Change me, Lord. And he's going to. So he's changing hearts. He is changing hearts. Then we say, send me, Lord. Send me, Lord. Because then we want to go. Because we don't want anybody else to have to go through that belly of the well. Okay, Ron's got a scripture for us. I just gave up. Yeah. He just gave up. He gave up his scriptures. He said, okay, we'll, we'll wait on you. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I got to put my glasses on. Oh, now we got to put our glasses on. Words to see and see to us. Yeah. First Peter 5. Yeah. The last part of 5 through the first part of 8. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Mm. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, and he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Wow. Break that on down. There's something about you're going to suffer for a little while. Yeah. I think oh, it's yeah. 12. Okay, in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I, I just read that verse last night. Okay. I was reading that. I, I mean, I was in First wow. Peter 5, and yeah. I'm like, no, wait a minute, for a little while. Mm -hmm. But I thought that was, that's, yeah. that's. I mean, that's, that's the boat. Right. That's the storm. Yeah, it goes We're right in the storm. The that's the belly of the whale. Yes. Oh, right along. it did. Oh, thank the Lord. You didn't forget. You didn't lose your spot. But when you're moving with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you see how the body of Christ is kind of like that bumblebee yeah. that's been yeah. flying around all day. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I really love how, you know, you picked that out. Yeah. Most of the time, I wait for you to call me, and if you don't, it must not be. No, I always want you to bring the scripture. I sometimes I just forget, so you just got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and and then she read it last night. Now that's no coincidence. That's confirmation. And you know that scripture which says, "Always be humble." God doesn't like a proud person. Well, what's a proud person do? They boast about themselves and their accomplishments. When it, yes. And they judge others and criticize others. When it's not their accomplishments, it's God's accomplishments. We need to guard ourselves against pride. It's always it's, about self. One more time. The B, the B was Christ. Yeah. Forgiveness was the sweetness of the honey. 
and the sting was ju justice, justice. And I thought, wow, that was so powerful. Yeah. Jesus is justice. The sting's coming. Yeah. But we... Why not? God just keeps working. <laughs> this is Holy Spirit just keeps bringing things. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Revelations 22, That's the sting. 12. That's the sting. That's the sting. That's the sting. Wow, God. Yeah. Well, you know, last week we were all talking about meditation and, so mm -hmm. and soaking in the Lord. And it says, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight of the Lord. I mean, we have so have taught, but we we have, and that's what we want, a moving God. And Jesus, precious. Oh, there's a uh, church meeting after church, everyone. But, yeah, it's okay. God is good. God is good. God bless. See you all later. God bless you.